guys have gone to overtime against the Blazers before. What did, <clears throat> in particular, what did this win reveal about your guys' character? I mean, what we already know. Uh, I mean, that was a great game. Uh, I, I, we won and lost that game so many times before ultimately winning it in the end. Um, you know, look like we're going to win the game in regulation. Dame hits a big shot. Looks like we have a chance to close it out. End of the first overtime. They force a second. Uh, the thing I'm most proud about, though, Mike, is every time they extended the game, we, we never hung our heads. You know, we never got down on ourselves. I thought the guys that were in the game were phenomenal, but also the guys that were not in the game but on the bench, uh, the energy, the positivity. Uh, and so we never, we never got down. Every time they threw a haymaker and – put us down on the canvas, we got up and, uh, you know, obviously we were able to uh, pull it out in the end. This was somewhat reminiscent of that four overtime game, uh, game three, two years ago. Uh, I'm thankful it didn't go two more and we could get it um, after two overtimes, but a uh, hell of a game. Both, I mean, Damian Lillard was uh, superhuman tonight. Uh, obviously what Nicole did, one assist shy of a triple double. Monte Morris, uh, that's the Monte Morris that I've come to love and respect. Aggressive, confident, getting downhill, stepping up and making big shots. I thought he was phenomenal off the bench for us. And, uh, you know, it's a hell of a win. And we got a chance to go to Portland and uh, try to close it out. And that'll be the toughest game of the series. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, after the questionable call on Austin, on Dame, uh, that was overturned but not totally reversed, what was the decision making in order in terms of not fouling Dame when you guys were up three? What was the thought process on that? Yeah, yeah Damian Lillard, you know, uh, if a guy catches inside the three point line, if a guy catches with his back to basket, uh, I think those are uh, times when you can look to take a foul. Uh, Damian Lillard's a, uh, like, he's like a Chris Paul. Uh, he's been around the block, he knows what time it is. And if you're trying to take that foul, my, my concern is, him making the three and giving up a four point play. Um, so it was really out of respect to Damian Lillard, um, his experience as a clutch player. Um, and I, I mean, there's a lot of things you could sit here and second guess, you know, lineups, give a foul, not give a foul. You know, we won the game. That's all that matters. And we will watch and learn from all those end of game, late game situations where, you know, we, we could have been better. Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. I'm curious, what are the emotions that go on through your head um, during games like this, and how do you manage to stay so composed? Well, I'm learning to become a good poker player because uh, probably five years ago, six years ago, when I first got here, I wouldn't have looked so composed. But uh, I, I'm often reminding myself uh, our guys are out there playing as hard as they possibly can. Uh, we're asking guys to step up and make plays that maybe haven't been in these situations before, don't haven't been maybe playoff tested before. Um, so game four, you know, we, we didn't bring the requisite effort. You know, our, our, our defensive disposition was not where it needed to be. You know, if we would have lost tonight, it would have been devastating. But at least I could have walked out of here proud in regards to how we played, how we started the game, uh, how Michael Porter answered the bell from having a disappointing game four to having a great game tonight. Um, that, that's all you can ask for as a coach. Are my guys competing? Are they fighting? Are they leaving it all on the floor? Uh, and I felt for uh, 58 minutes or whatever it was tonight, I felt we did that. And it's great to get the win after giving so much of ourselves. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Coach. Um... I'd like you to comment on this, just just the emotion in this building uh, and on your bench after a long 15 months or so for all of us, you know, whether it's your team, this city, this country, whatever. I mean, it felt pretty good in here to me. What about you? Oh, it, it felt better than that. I mean, uh, I'm hoping that we can continue to find a way to, to amp up the, uh, uh, the number of people we allow in Ball Arena, kids. Uh, but no, I, we, we have great fans. I mean, uh, yes, we've gotten better on the court, our roster, our players, more experience, but um, our, our fans deserve a ton of credit in making this place, Pepsi Center, now Ball Arena, 
a really tough place to play. Uh, they get loud, they get into it, and they bring us life. They bring us energy. Uh, and you're right, it's been a really long, I don't even know, two years now, whatever. It seems like forever. Uh, last season combined with this season is it's so uh, – it's hard to grasp sometimes. But uh, I, I love our fans. I love how they get behind us and make this a tough place to play. And uh, we, we need even more moving forward. So thank you to our fans. Thank you for the atmosphere. And uh, shit, let's, let's might as well, let's, let all, let's make it a sellout next time, kids. Let's let 19,000 in. I'm all for it. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Michael, uh, you mentioned it a little, but Mike has the rough game last time out and um, comes out tonight, hits some big shots, gets on the glass, which he said he was going to do, and, and then hits that big three late. What did tonight's performance just kind of tell you about the person, the player that, that Michael Porter is. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I wasn't really surprised to be honest with you. I mean, Michael's way too talented of a player, you know, uh, to, uh, to have two games like that back to back. Uh, and I challenged him. I said, Michael, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to help you more. I'm going to help generate more than three shots. But a lot of this is also on you. And he owned it. He, he embraced it. Uh, you know, we looked to get him in the post tonight against, you know, some of their smaller guards uh, run more action for him. I mean, to go 10 of 13 from the field, three of five from three, uh, and grab 12 boards with three assists. It's the second year in the NBA. I think people often forget that. This is a second year playing in the NBA. Uh, and, and I just told him how proud I was of him. And he goes, hey, he goes, Coach, I, I got to do that every night. And he's right. He does. Uh, and he understands that. So really proud of him. Uh, I thought he did a good job. His teammates did a good job of getting him involved, looking for him. And when your shot's not going or they're taking you out, find ways to do other things. We've always talked about how great of a rebound of Michael Porter is. So if they're taking you out in one area, well, affect the game in another. And tonight he was able to score and rebound, uh, which, which is what he should be doing every night for us. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Mike, what about Monte gives you confidence to, to put the ball in his hands multiple times down the stretch in regulation overtime and double overtime and, and sending him to the line in those situations? Yeah, no, I mean, like his body of work, you know, my, my three years, whatever it is with Monte Morris. I mean, there, there's a reason we gave him the contract that we gave him, uh, not just to be Jamal Morris backup, but to be a guy that can close games with Jamal. You know, that, that was our thinking at the time. Well, obviously, all the injuries that we have right now, you know, Monte's been here before. I mean, he's got 33 playoff games under his belt uh, going into this series. Uh, and I felt in the first four, to be very honest, I, I just thought he was playing very passive. You know, I felt he was playing East West. Um, and, you know, he, he understood that he embraced it. He owned it. And, and I thought he was a different player tonight. Obviously Nicola was phenomenal. Uh, Aaron had some great moments. Austin made some big, big plays. Michael Porter, we talked about, but Monte Morris and Nicola down the stretch, that was that two-man kind of closing uh, duo, and, and Monte embraced it and was great. And, you know, obviously going out of Portland now for game six, we'll, we'll need more of the same from Monte. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Esteban Abed. Save the best for last, Esteban. Huh. Yeah, thank you very much, coach. Congrats for the win, for this big uh, victory for us. Um, in, in many years, uh, Denver have the big opportunity to close uh, a series in a sick game. Uh, how do you feel about this big opportunity? Yeah, uh, excited about it. You know, obviously, um, you know, the, the closeout game is, is the toughest game in any series. You know, uh, we know that their fans will be providing a tremendous atmosphere in Portland. Uh, their players are not going to go quietly into that good night. Um, so we're going to get a hell of a good fight. And uh, we have to be the aggressor uh, in everything we do. I thought to start the game, we were terrific. I thought to end that second quarter, we were awful. We stopped attacking. We stopped defending. We stopped moving. We became very stagnant. And they closed on a huge run to get back into the game. Um, so we have to play a lot closer to 48 minutes than as sporadic as we did in that first half. But um, I, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the challenge. I know our players are as well. And, uh, you know, let's get on that plane tomorrow morning. 
and, and, and try to close it out in Portland. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.